Hello, welcome, I'm Kat. Thank you for joining me for Yoga to Revive. So this yoga class is very relaxing. We're going to do lovely flowing movements and positions that help you breathe deeper. So it's going to help to relax and calm you. So it's really great if you're feeling a bit stressed. It's also really great if you're feeling a bit sluggish or tired because it's going to give you that proper feeling of rest and boost your energy levels. Enjoy the class. Find a comfortable seat to start. Cross-legged is fine. You'll probably need a block to sit on or a firm cushion and allow your awareness to scan over your body, observing how you're feeling. Draw your attention to your breath and take in some lovely inhalations and exhalations. Nice and deep, nice and natural. Maybe sighing out through your mouth and again. And then on your inhalation, shrug your shoulders up to your ears and exhale them down your back. And again, inhaling up, lengthen your spine, keep the spine long as the shoulders slide down away from the ears, feeling the muscles you need to engage to draw the shoulders down. Just see if you can notice that. One more time, and then planting your shoulder blades down in your back pockets, as if you could keep them there. And you could even feel them sliding slightly towards the base of the spine in a V shape. This helps to keep the top of the trapezius muscle nice and relaxed. So on our next inhalation, sweeping your arms around and up and exhale as you circle your wrists in towards the midline of the body as the arms drift down. Take your time, move with your breath, bring palms to touch. Maybe feel a gentle wrist stretch. Inhale as you reach your arms up. Exhale, bringing your arms out and down and circling your wrists away from the midline of your body, all the way down, shoulders stay away from the ears. Bring palms to touch in front of your heart. Inhale, reaching your arms out and wide, palms face forward, keep shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, reaching your arms back and down, palms stay facing forward, squeeze shoulder blades together, keep them down away from the ears. Inhaling back and up, and exhale, palms to touch. We shall repeat that two more times. Inhaling up, big breath in, exhale, down. Shoulders away from the ears, squeeze shoulder blades together. Head, neck and spine long and aligned. Inhaling up. This helps to open the rib cage, taking in a deeper breath. Exhale, palms to touch. One more like that. All in your own breath timing. We're keeping going with the same movement, but reversing the breath. So inhale here as you squeeze palms together. Exhale, reaching your arms up, keep shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, squeezing shoulder blades together. As the hands come down behind you, palms face forward. Lovely chest stretch. In exhaling up and inhaling palms to touch. So exhale up, really drop your shoulders down your back as your fingertips feel energized and active. Inhale, exhale. Shoulders draw down, fingertips reach up. Like your arms are elastic bands being stretched evenly from both directions. Inhale, palms to touch. One more round. Exhale up, inhale back. Exhale up, inhale, palms to touch. Exhale, your hands down by your sides. Inhale, reaching one arm up and exhale over into a side lean. Inhale, cartwheel the arms up as you bring the body back to center. Exhale over the other way, continue with your breath. Keep your bottom firmly rooted down. 
Think of length, grow tall and then extend over. Find a lovely side stretch, hopefully all the way down into your outer hip and that helps to, it helps to really ground the buttock down, ground the sit bone, the bony bits you sit on at the bottom of the pelvis, ground them down, that helps to get that stretch all the way down the side body, all the way down into the outer hip here. So we're coming over to the left now and then as you come up just let your head hang to the left, bring your torso back to centre so the head stays just hanging gently to the left as this right arm comes down and as the fingertips come down to the earth and you draw your right shoulder away from your ear you might feel a stretch in the right side of the neck just engaging now. Let's increase upon this too, so inhaling left arm up Taking your left hand to the right side of your head, drawing up and over. Breathe. Good. So really lengthening your head up, a little bit of traction, deepening the side stretch for the neck. Let's release, bring everything back to centre, head, neck and spine aligned. Inhale, left arm up again, and we extend over to the right. Let your head just fall to the right in a very relaxed way. Bring your torso back to centre, but keep your head just falling to the right as you place your left hand down. You'll feel this left side of the neck stretching, and you'll feel that stretch engaged there. You can just stay like this, keep the lower back long, or if you want more challenge, reaching your right arm up, or more intensity to the stretch and taking hold of the left side of your head and drawing up. Keep breathing and let your left shoulder slide down. Let's release, come back to the center. So then bringing your feet out in front of you into star pose, I'm just gonna turn on my mat and this is because when my ankles come on this hard floor it feels uncomfortable for my ankles you could pad under your ankles or you can change your angle on the mat just so that they're resting on something a little bit more squishy than a hard floor you might be on carpet you might be fine and so we've got our feet a little bit of a distance in front of our body soles of the feet touching centered on the sit bones you may or may not have a block we're going to circle from here. If you're sitting up on a bit of support, like a block or a firm cushion, then it does give you a little bit more mobility in the pelvis, especially if you're quite tight around your hips or lower back. So if you're finding these circles a bit uncomfortable or sore on your back, do try sitting up on something higher. You can make a little stack of books, um, maybe even a low footstool, something that gives you that height to allow this movement to happen and we're circling the pelvis so inhale forwards to come to the front edges of the sit bones exhale backwards this movement is coming from the hips not from the waist you might place your hands on your hips just to feel the movement of the pelvis tipping forwards and backwards let's make this the last one in this direction doesn't matter which way you started we're going to go the other way Inhale forwards, exhale backwards. You may need to adjust yourself. I'm starting to slip forward off my block. There we go. And we're just bringing lots of wonderful mobility into the hips. Make sure you work with your breath. Inhale forwards, exhale backwards. Working with the breath is so energizing. <sighs> Let's make this the last one in this direction and come back to centre. Nice long and lengthen up your spine. Take your right leg out to the side. So the toes are pointing straight up towards the ceiling, the knee points straight up towards the ceiling, you're centred on your sit bone. You can keep your left leg like this or you can draw the foot all the way in. Now the important thing here is that you are centred on your sit bones, that you're not rocking backwards. So if you find that you're on the back edge of the sit bone, your pelvis is tipping backwards, you're rounding your spine, you feel some strain in your tummy muscles, then you can sit up on something higher 
or you can bend your knee more. If you're a little bit more flexible maybe in your hamstrings, you might be able to straighten this leg a little bit more. Listen to your body. The position of the pelvis is really important. The pelvis needs to be neutral, like a bowl of water that's not spilling out the back. So you don't want to be back on the pelvis, you want to be neutral. Bend the knee more if you need to. We're going to circle the hips from here. So again, you need that little bit more mobility in the hamstrings to come forward into the forward tilt. So if you're not finding that mobility, if it's too tight in your hamstring, bend your knee more. That will give you the mobility. You can also sit up on a block to help to lift the back of the pelvis, which will give you that mobility a bit more as well. So feel free to pause the video and have a little experiment. We're doing some circles from here. Same breath. Inhale forward. And exhale backwards. Hands can be wherever they're comfy. We are tipping backwards on the pelvis, but just for a moment, and we're moving through that motion. Obviously, don't do it if it feels uncomfortable. See if you can feel that when you tip backwards on the pelvis and you move through that backwards tilt, your tummy naturally draws in towards the spine. You might even feel your pelvic floor lift if your mind-body connection with those pelvic floor muscles is quite strong. See if you can feel it naturally happening. This natural engagement of the tummy muscles on the pelvic floor is called Mulabandha in yoga. It's very energising, very grounding, and very good for toning your pelvic floor and your tummy, and it's good for their circulation and their health, those muscles. So we're coming back to centre now. Let's go the other way, just for a few rounds, inhaling forward, exhaling backwards. Your mind is connected with your breath. Your mind is connected with the sensations that you feel. As you move, you might find the flexibility of your hips, back, hamstring and the right leg increasing, so you might be able to make the circles a bit bigger. But don't worry if they're small, that's fine. And we're coming back to centre now. So move the flesh of the buttock out the way in the right leg. You can feel that sit bone in contact with the earth. Knees and toes point straight up towards the ceiling. Turn your hips and maybe bring the hands to the hips. Small movement, turn the inner hips towards the right leg. Move the flesh of the buttocks back out the way. So I keep saying that because it's really important to not have the buttocks stuck under the hip bone, the inner, sorry, the sit bone. We want to move that flesh and the sit bone is in contact with the block and we can feel where the pressure is coming on that sit bone because we're going to tip forward and we want to feel the weight coming to the front edge of the sit bone. So hands either side of the extended leg or to the inside if that's more comfy. Inhale, lengthen up and exhale, inquiring into tipping forward to the front edges of the sit bones. Every inhalation, you're lengthening the spine and every exhalation, you are inquiring into tipping forward a little more. The heart stays lifted, not rounding your shoulders. Broad and open across your chest, breathing wide and full into your chest. Keep imagining your right sit bone is extending out behind you like roller skates, like it was on roller skates. And the ball of the foot is shining energy out, so spread the toes, gently push the ball of the foot away. On your next inhalation, reaching your left arm up, we're coming into seated gait pose. Lengthen up that left side of the body ground down through the left sit bone to get the stretch all the way down the side body and into the outer hip area. Imagine you have a straight line coming out the top of your right toes. Reach up to the very top of that line and breathe. Have the sense that you're rolling your chest and tummy up towards the ceiling. On your next inhalation, come back to centre. Let's swap over legs, so left leg comes out, right leg comes in, and again, you can have it in front of you, you can bring it all the way in. Adjust this leg, so if you need the knee bent a little bit, that's fine. Curl the toes towards you, draw through the balls of the feet, and move the flesh of the buttocks 
back so the sit bone is in contact with the floor and then we're circling so maybe bring your hands to your hips i'm a lot tighter in this left hamstring than i was in the right so circles are starting very small here ensuring that as I come forward, I'm not rounding my lower back as I come forward, I'm coming to the front edges of the sit bones. That's really important for the health of the back. As I tip backwards, it's okay to move through the back edges of the sit bones, just for a moment there. Feel the tummy naturally drawing in, pelvic floor lifting. You might bring the upper body into it a little more. You can round the shoulders as you exhale, tip backwards. Shine the chest forward, roll the shoulders back, maybe lift the chin to expose the throat as you come forward. But all the movement is coming from the hips. It is the pelvis that is leading the movement. Let's do one more in this direction. And let's go the other way. Inhale forwards, exhale backwards. Make sure your left leg stays active. So by that, I mean the muscles are engaged. The knee and the toes point straight up towards the ceiling. Spread your toes slightly. Gently press the ball of the foot away so the foot is really active. You can imagine shining energy out through the ball of the foot. Shoulders are drawing down the back and away from the ears. Arms rest in a comfortable position, whatever that looks like for you. Let's make this the last round and come back to centre. Bring your hands to your hips, move the flesh of the left buttock out of the way again. So we really want to feel that sit bone in contact with the mat or block or whatever you're sitting on. Turn your inner hips towards the left leg, tiny shift of the hips. Hands can come either side of the front leg. And then we're inhaling, lifting and lengthening up and exhaling as we tip forward to the front edges of the sit bones. Just inquiring into this movement. It doesn't have to be a big one. The amount that this knee is bent will be individual to you. Bending it more will allow you to tip forward more to the front edges of the sit bones. So if you're struggling with it, if you think you might be rounding your lower back at all, try bending your knee more. Keep the heart open. Think more of tummy to thigh than shoulders to the floor. We don't want to have shoulders to the floor. We're actually drawing the shoulders back. Heart is open. Maybe imagine beaming a lovely beam of light from your heart forward to your foot, forward to your toes. And on your inhalation, reaching your right arm up, opening chest and tummy towards the ceiling. Your right palm can turn towards your left toes. And you can imagine a straight line coming out the top of your left toes, reaching up towards the top of that line. So we're thinking more of lengthening up than over. Lengthen up first, over. Chest and heart towards the ceiling, chest and tummy towards the ceiling, grounding through your right sit bone. Deep breaths, breathe wide and full into the ribcage. Make sure you can breathe evenly into both sides of the ribcage so we're not collapsing through this underside of the body at all. Shoulders away from the ears. One more lovely breath here. And come back to center. Bring the soles of the feet together, this time nice and close into your body for bound angle pose. We also call this one butterfly pose or cobbler's pose, it's got lots of names. Um, let's think of butterfly pose today. You can softly engage the buttocks like butterfly wings, opening even more to increase into this stretch. And we can have a few little releases and engagements of the buttocks. So, we can engage the buttocks to open the hips a bit more. This will help to stretch and open the inner thighs. We release the buttocks, maybe even engage your inner thighs a little to lift the knees like butterfly wings flapping. So great for toning the buttocks and the inner thighs. Great for increasing flexibility in the inner thighs. Good. One more breath. Now just engage the buttocks again, just to release the inner thighs that little bit more. 
You might inquire into tip four, tipping forward to the front edges of the sit bones, if that feels good for you to deepen and, and enhance this stretch. Good. Slowly coming back to sitting, coming into a cross-legged position again. Bring palms to touch in front of your heart. Feel that connection of the palms together, the circle of energy that you have created. Feeling revived and energized. Bow your head for a moment, just bringing your thumbs to the center of your forehead and giving yourself some gratitude for making it to the mat and for your yoga practice today. Well done, everybody. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and tell your friends that you're practicing Katsari Yoga. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.